Welcome to Jamie TV and thank you for tuning in. I want to make music for film or TV or video games or all three. I feel very strongly that this is where my career should go next. But despite having been a professional musician for most of my adult life and being pretty well established as a session player, performer, recording artist, I have absolutely no idea how to get into this side of the business. I have literally no idea what door to knock on. But I'm about to start trying to find out. So I thought, you know what I'll do? I'll make some videos. I'll document my progress. Maybe this is of interest to you. Maybe this is a side of the business you'd like to get into, but you are similarly mystified by it. Or maybe just documenting my successes and my failures will be a good bit of entertainment. Stay tuned and let's find out. Please do not adjust your set. And now a word about this video's sponsor. DistroKid are the premier music distribution service for independent artists. Upload your track and artwork and let DistroKid take care of distributing your music to streaming services and collecting the royalties for you. When you sign up, you choose from one of three different reasonably priced plans, depending which services you as an artist require, and each one represents excellent value for money. You pay once a year, and no matter which price plan you're on, you can release as many tunes as you want for no extra charge. The more prolific you are, the more money you will save by using DistroKid. You will also keep 100% of your earnings and you can get a 7% discount off your first year's membership by using this link, which you will find in the description below this video. So far, I've released five tracks through DistroKid only using their cheapest plan, the Musician plan. And all five tracks have been available to stream on YouTube Music within 24 hours. The last one, Replicant Hunter, took less than three hours and all were on Spotify in less than two days. There's so much more good stuff I could say about DistroKid, but for now, I just want to say thank you DistroKid for taking all the pain out of releasing music and thank you for sponsoring this video and making this new journey possible. I'm 100% confident that I can do this. If I didn't truly believe that, I would not be pursuing it. But I've been thinking about it and thinking about it and overthinking it as you do and I have some concerns. I'm going to share all those concerns with you starting with this one. If hypothetically I could communicate with somebody who might be interested in getting some music from me to place in whatever, then I think their first question would be, well, what's your track record? And of course, the honest answer is right now, I have no track record to speak of and there's no point lying about it. And I would probably find that the door would be firmly shut in my face right there and then. But if, if it wasn't, if I'd still got the person's attention and they were prepared to listen further, then the next question would probably be, well, can I hear a body of work so that I can hear what you can do? And well, I've released loads of music over the years. I've played on loads of recordings for people, but none of that stuff is really appropriate for this job. But that's not a problem. Recently, I started thinking, well, what I should do is I should put together a body of work to show what I can do. So what I'll do is I'll record a grandiose film movie soundtrack theme and maybe a cheeky TV theme and a chip tune soundtrack for a video game and this and that and the other. And then I thought, well, I feel like I'm kind of spreading myself really thin. I'm sure I could do all of those things, but maybe I should start out by specializing in one specific thing and then work from there. Could be a mistake, I don't know if it's a good decision or not, but that's what I decided to do. So I thought, well, I might as well start out with something that I like. Well, I love cyberpunk movies, I love cyberpunk music, I love metal guitars, I love experimental soundtrack music, and I love first person shooter games. So I thought what I'll do is, I'll start out by making a few tracks where I combine all those musical elements and I will make some, some music that I could imagine working really well in a first person shooter game. Or maybe even a cyberpunk movie. Was that a mistake? I don't know. At this point, I feel like I kind of, I had a direction and now I'm not sure. And I think right now what I need is some advice. So I'm going to see if I can get in touch with a musician who has had some success working in, in the business in this area. Ask some questions 
and maybe try and get in touch with somebody who perhaps works at a software company, a, a game developer, and ask some questions. The musician I reached out to is Jeffrey Day. Like me, he's a huge fan of the music Mick Gordon made for the Doom and Doom Eternal games, which led to the birth of a whole new music genre, Argent Metal. I discovered Jeff's channel whilst researching Argent Metal some time ago and instantly subscribed. He's a brilliant musician and seems to be a terrific human. This is Jeff's own synopsis of his adventure into composing for video games. I've been making metal and EDM music for almost two decades now, but only been a full-time professional since last year. The big change for me was finding traction on YouTube with the Doomify type content and commentary. A couple of bigger hits with the covers have been hugely helpful for paying my bills, allowing me to focus on the right stuff. After maybe a year of that, I did an indie soundtrack via a Twitter connection. And then at the same time, I got very lucky by being reached out to by the team working on Atomic Heart, who maybe saw my YouTube videos. The career so far has been a lot of extreme ups and downs, but the high points are nice. So, by recording covers of music from hugely popular video games in the style of music from other hugely popular video games, that combined with his undeniable musical and compositional skills, Jeff was able to build a very successful YouTube channel and attract game developers to it, who then reached out to him with offers of work. Now that's very interesting. I posed some questions to Jeff by email and he replied to me by email, so I'm going to read out my questions and read out his answers, but to make this section of the video more visually appealing, Jeff and I will be played by characters from video games. Is it worth a musician reaching out directly to a game developer? Or is it better to use some kind of agency or third party to get this work? I'm finding that this industry, except for the highest tiers, is pretty relationship driven. It's also a small industry, so you can connect with so many folks directly. Right now, I think it makes more sense to seek out game developers who make cool stuff and then just reach out as a fan to them. Maybe send clips of, I made this song about X in your game, what do you think? And doing regular releases on Instagram, YouTube, etc. For fun, to build up your portfolio. Let your work and work ethic speak for itself and don't expect anything. People will ask you for help if they see you as a fit for their game. Keep in mind that as the budget increases, the barrier of entry does too, by a lot. The guys I know who work on really big, well-paying games have not only decades of experience, but often have an agent or even a team. Opportunities for AAA work don't usually get posted as job openings. Those are offers that happen between people in a close network, with some exceptions, but rare. What advice would you give to a musician wanting to make music for the gaming industry? Nerd out about games, understand how they work, who makes them, and how the music writing process differs from non-game music. Not counting stuff like League of Legends themes, which are meant to be pop songs for marketing purposes. Hang around in the same spaces, online or in person, as folks who currently work with games or do game adjacent things. Assume that networking is equally as important as musical skill, and that it's always a long game. I've started putting together a body of work to use as example tracks to attract developers to my music. Focusing on one area to begin with, cyberpunk spliced with metal guitars. I call it cyber metal. I thought I would show I was good at that and gradually diversify from there. Was that a mistake or should I immediately be looking to create a very diverse body of work? I think that example tracks are good and yes, probably better start with what you're good at. 
Something to keep in mind is that the audience for a specific genre doesn't always overlap with game developers who need composers. You may find yourself drawing the eye of metal fans, metal musicians or cyberpunk players. That's not a bad thing, but it's not necessarily getting you closer to a job. This can be said about any genre really. Also, this happened to me with cover songs. So this is where networking matters a lot because it helps you understand what people who need work done are actually looking for and then you can focus your skills on that stuff. I've released the cyber metal tracks on all the streaming platforms. Was that a mistake? Could that mean that a developer would be put off using them? Should I be keeping them on a hard drive and unpublished? No. Leave them up on surfaces. Assume you will always have to make new music for your jobs. At the early stages, it's good to have a portfolio that is easy to find and listen to. Should I register my tracks with PRS like I would for a track I was releasing on streaming services? Maybe. I'm not sure if that will help or hurt, but in general, I'll say that you shouldn't overvalue your tracks this early in the process. The market is extremely saturated. Thank you, Mr. Jeffrey Day. Thank you so much for replying, because if you hadn't done, I would have no content for this video. It's about three days since I emailed Jeff, and he replied to me about a day later. At the same time, I emailed four different games developers of varying sizes and types, a nice polite email just asking for a little help and advice about this side of the music business. Only one of them has replied, and unfortunately, it seems that they've just read the beginning of my message, presumed that I'm a musician who wants to submit some unsolicited material to them, and they've just sent me like a sort of a form letter, just explaining politely that they don't do that. But I don't give up, so I've replied, and I've just pointed out that that's not what I was wishing to do, and would they please take another look at it. But this is the kind of closed-door sort of situation that I was expecting and fully prepared for when I started looking at this side of the business. Now, I could sit here and go through all of Jeff's very interesting points, discuss them, but I think that Jeff's given us a lot of interesting stuff to think about, and I think I'm just going to digest that for a little while, and maybe you'd like to do that too. And when you've done so, if you have any comments about it, if you'd like to comment down below this video, that would be excellent. If there's any areas of this side of the music business that you'd like me to explore, find out about, and share what I can find out, then please do so. It would be great if you helped to kind of dictate the direction of these videos, because this side of the music business is new to me, but I, like I say, I don't give up. I'm going to find out about this stuff, and I'm going to let you know about it too. So at this point, I'm going to just say once again a massive thank you to Mr. Jeffrey Day, a huge thanks to DistroKid for sponsoring this video. Until my next video, take care of yourselves, be kind, be good, make lots of music, never give up and try not to piss pants about. I'll see you later.